It's awesome when there's actual journalism taking place with local news. And that was no exception when it came to Waco's KWTX interviewing Kenneth Starr. Now, er earlier this week, we talked about Kenneth Starr stepping down as chancellor of Baylor. And the reason why he did that is because the university is facing a sexual assault scandal where a few of its football players have not only been accused of sexual assault, but they've been convicted of it. Now, he had assumed, or he had said that he knew nothing about these sexual assault cases, but he's going to step down because the captain goes down with the ship, right? However, Waco's KWTX realized that there was an email from one of the women who had been raped sent directly to him, and they asked him whether or not he had read that email. Look at his response. I honestly may have. I'm not denying that I saw it. But it's what happens moments later that brings the interview to a halt. What you can't see during this interview is my news director behind me. You also can't see a woman named Mary Spate, who asked my boss to promise not to use that portion of the interview. When he says no, she interrupts our interview. Well, I want to point out, I, I need to talk to Jen Stark. Don't just start. Okay. Okay. I need to talk to you, sir. Okay. Do you ask great questions? Okay, great. Can I ask you one more question? I have I got to talk to you. Okay. Okay. Spate was introduced to our crew as a longtime family friend. What we've since learned is she has a long resume in crisis management. She's a communications specialist, owns her own firm, and was once a director of media relations at the White House for President Reagan. She also coached Starr while he gave testimony to impeach Bill Clinton. So she controls his message pretty aggressively. That's the first part um, of the video. Anna, she was just a family friend, happened to be at the house. <laughs> and she's, she's aggressive. She's yeah. aggressive. She would not let the interview continue. And you can kind of see the fear in his eyes when he's addressing her, which is kind of incredible, right? Uh -huh. And she's the person who's helped him with crisis management for a long time. So It's like, oh, wow, I can't believe how long it's been since I've seen Ken Starr's face. Uh -huh. It's so not fun to watch Ken Starr's face anymore, ever. Well, I thought this, we would never have to see Ken well, Starr ever, ever, ever again. The rest of this video is kind of fun, actually. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's right. So let's take a look at that. I'm down. She needs to ask you that question again. Whether you do it on camera or not, it's up to you. I just want to make sure it doesn't end up misedited. Okay. We ask Starr again, and he answers, but turns to Spate, apparently for coaching. All I'm going to say is, I, I honestly have no recollection of that. Of seeing any email? Is that okay? Don't look at me, look at her. Then Star answers again. I honestly have no recollection of seeing such an email, and I believe that I would remember seeing such an email. The President University gets lots of emails. I don't even see a lot of the emails that come into the office of the president. I have no recollection of it, none. While Starr calls for transparency and openness, it appears his message is still being tightly controlled. Oh my gosh. He gets uh, many emails. I did many, not have many, many e emails. I did not okay. have email with that woman. <laughs> um, I think there's something wrong with Ken Starr. Like, I, I'm not sure he's completely there anymore. Wait, wait a minute. Because wait, was he ever? No, but like, so here's what I mean. Ken Starr is, is as much as I suspect all of us dislike him, um, was a very sharp lawyer, and he prosecuted Bill Clinton aggressively, viciously, and, and meticulously. So he's not the kind of lawyer that would be like, oh, I didn't just notice implicating myself. Right when he says, "Oh yeah, yeah, honestly, I think I, I got that email." I mean, he had right, and so then to have a PR person have to coach him and go, "Now, Kenny, you're not supposed to admit the truth. Remember?" And he's like, "Did I do it right? Did I do it right?" I hear you, Jack. Right? I would like to point out that he had the United States Congress, led by Newt Gingrich, and behind him, a limitless amount of money and one case. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and and fifty lawyers. Working for him, like so you think maybe he was a dullard all along. And I, I know that you know he was for a long time thought to be a uh, uh, you know a comer and a potential Republican appointee to the Supreme Court. And both Ronald Reagan and George H. W. Bush passed on him. In part, I heard today that uh, that James Baker was like, no, not him. Well, hmm. but let's not lose the fact that there's a rape epidemic going on on college campuses right now. Um, my good friend uh, uh, Amy Ziering, a producer of a film, I interviewed called, her. Yeah, uh, the, the Hunting, Hunting Ground. Ground. Yeah. And it's, it's devastating right now. 
Um, and, you know, to be there and say, you know, oh, well, to make it as if it was some kind of a talking point, some kind of game, some kind of charade, it's just ugly. You know, the, Especially uh, considering the total lack of irony mm -hmm. about so, a sex scandal oh my God, the, with this guy. I mean, the sex scandal and, and, a, and, a, and an obfuscation and a very specific manner of answering a question. I mean, like you... As do, you, lawyer, do you get this? Does this strike you? Does he at least not go, oh, this is ironic? Uh, this yeah, is, yeah, no. This is quite clearly. a moment. Not uh, you know, I have, uh, moment. I have two of my closest friends very steeped in academia. One, the president, uh, the dean of a law school. The other one, uh, an assistant to the president of a major university. The, no the notion, both of them are, are schools that are fairly sports obsessed in their own way. Not quite mm -hmm. as big, but neither of them as big as a top ten football program, which is what Baylor had when, when Ken Starr took over under Art Bryles, right? They were competing for a national championship uh, each year. You know, Robert Griffin the third quarterback at Baylor. That was sort of the beginning of this Baylor resurgence. They know everything that goes on with the football team. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing in many ways, and they probably roll their eyes that it is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. There are well-meaning university presidents who are like, I can't believe i got to deal with the football team 24-7. But the notion that football players would be accused of rape to the point where there are police investigating it, mm -hmm. that they would be like, oh, I was not. I was oh, they, just, sorry, they didn't break me in on That is absurd on every level. It's a lie, yes, and this interview just confirms that, right? Because he essentially confessed that, yeah, I got that email, and then he had to change his messaging based on what his PR agent wanted. But the one thing that I want to point out is, of course they knew. There was one player from Boise who was being investigated for sexual assault charges. No other university would touch him, surprisingly, because it seems like universities don't really care about those issues, and as long as it's a good player, they'll take him. Um, Baylor was the only university that was willing to take him, and as he was playing for Baylor, he actually got convicted for sexual assault in the state of Texas for another case. Of course they knew this was going on. Really? Yeah, and so again, unfortunately, uh, what leads to success is oftentimes not being particularly bright, as you can tell from Ken Starr. I mean, I don't know if he's always been this way, but not very bright to go, oh yeah, I saw the email. Oh, I shouldn't say that? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I didn't see the but, email. But did you but just saw you say that you saw the email, right? Anyway, so it's not that. It's shamelessness. Yeah. So <laughs> Baylor was willing to do what no one else was willing to do. Come on. It doesn't matter, right? You're, an, you're a rapist. You're a criminal. It doesn't It's It's what... Uh, you know, Trump thinks Mexicans are. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually but this Christian college is like, you guys, all of you, just come here. I don't care. Just play for as me. As long but as you're going to make money for this university, mm -hmm. come play for us, right? And we'll brush those sexual assaults under the rug. And that's essentially what's happening to a lot of these schools who are in a lot of trouble for brushing cases of sexual assault under the rug. Either they're Ivy League institutions that don't want to do anything to you know, ruin their name and their reputation, or it's these schools that have athletes who are being investigated or have been convicted of sexual assault. It's insane. But, but if this woman was the, was the PR communications director <laughs> in the Reagan White House, then her message is simple, deny, 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 deny. Over 100 members of the Reagan administration were indicted or convicted or implicated in scandals. People don't real remember. We, we, you know, a lot of folks hold up Ronald Reagan as this wonderful, amazing president. That was one of the most corrupt and actually criminal administrations in American history. So she was the person. What's amazing to me is that she's clearly not on the ball either. She comes in, she goes, no, 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 don't say that, in the middle of an interview. Yeah, and, as and cameras in this are moment, rolling. Yeah. As cameras are rolling, I mean, that's astonishing that's to me. The, that's my favorite part. My publicist who's hiding behind that wall right now would never come out <laughs> and no, but, do that. But I mean, but you're right. I couldn't, not only did she come out and get herself on TV violating every rule of publicist, right? Get herself on TV speaking the lie out loud. Yes. That they abandoned every other part of the interview and just put it online. Like mm -hmm. at the end of that piece, the anchor goes, you can see the rest of the interview online, but this is because we just decided this was the only part that matters. And, you know, that, outside the lines, ESPN actually broke the story of the email, but they were smart enough to get Star and they talked to him about it, which I guess ESPN didn't. And that news director at that interview knew it was a big interview. He's right behind his reporter. They ask, hey, don't ask that question, right? And you, that I was told they see that you wouldn't be including this. And the news director went, no, we're, I'm, he stood right behind his reporter. And did it, and that's serious pressure. 
Uh, Those she's, are the rules. She's the worst. Those right, are the but, rules. but we know. You ask, we, ask we, the we, question. You know, Jenk and I have been exposed to it plenty of times. There are plenty of news directors who, when faced because of some political stand, even a minor or just a question that a reporter asked of a politician, lost their job just in the last year in this country. Yeah, and and by the way, that's why she did it. You think how crazy is she to to do something that outrageous while the cameras are rolling? But that's because it'll work most of the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just that didn't. pressure mm -hmm. does work, and so. Great credit to the reporter and, and, and the news director and the entire station of KWTX for doing real journalism, just like Anna said in the beginning, and saying, no, we're, we're going to air the thing that you said that is the most pertinent thing to this case. We're not going to let you bury it. Unfortunately, oftentimes they do. That's mm -hmm. why she was brazen enough to come out and say, just delete the truth from the record. Yeah, we don't want it to be edited the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. She, her, she apologized today to her friend, Kenneth Starr, for embarrassing him, putting him in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, did not apologize to any of the rape victims or or anyone else in, involved in the story for trying to she also, obviously <sighs> uh, shade the truth. I